Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be about my cockapoo. This is Peppa. Say hey. This is Peppa, my cockapoo, who is just over a year old now. She is absolutely my world. She's literally just the cuddliest thing. Come on, I'm doing a video. I can't keep cuddling. Oh. Yeah, we're talking about you. So, anyway, getting too distracted cuddling her. She is the cuddliest dog ever. Um, so I have three dogs. Um, I have a pug, I have Italian Greyhound, and I have a cockapoo. Um, so this video is going to be the pros and cons of owning a cockapoo. So if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking of getting one and wondering what they're like. So this is just to help you with your decision slightly. Um, before getting my cockapoo, I watched these videos, I looked online, I did loads of research and you read so many different things. So you'll read like things that are true for that breed, for that dog, but not for my dog. Like each cockapoo is very different. Yeah, so every cockapoo that you come across will be completely different because they are a crossbreed. So they are crossed between a poodle and a cocker spaniel. So no two cockapoos are gonna be the same. I'm actually a dog boarder and a dog walker. I own my own business and I have never met a cockapoo. Two cockapoos the same. They are all so different in personality, so different in size. You'll meet some that are as small as like a chihuahua. You'll meet some that are as big as a Great Dane. They literally, all shapes, all sizes, and all personalities. Yeah, so I can't tell you what your cockapoo is definitely gonna be like, personality-wise, because they are all so different. Um, yeah, so they are all completely different personality-wise. Um, so what is true for some is completely different for others. So all I can tell you is my experience and my pros and cons of owning the best breed in the world. So before getting Peppa, I almost was put off by watching videos like this because I kept seeing like really negative stuff about cockapoos. Um, and I was like, oh, I'm not sure, you know, it sounds like a really hard work breed. We have had the total opposite. She is the easiest dog I've ever owned. She is an absolute dream. She is so good. She is amazing. So anyway, without bragging on about my baby, I'm going to give you a list of our pros and cons. So here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the cons. I'm gonna do five cons and five pros. So the first con is that cockapoos are very high energy. They need a lot of exercise. A uh, cockapoo that is not exercised is going to be a cockapoo that is gonna be chewing your house up, barking nonstop and just being miserable. They love to run, they love to play. Peppa will run and run like absolute crazy when she is out. She loves running around so much, but at home, she is the most chilled dog I have ever had. Honestly, she literally just sleeps all day. She does not, she doesn't do anything. She sleeps all day. So she gets about an hour and a half run around off lead in the morning. And then she gets another hour in the afternoon, early evening. Um, and yeah, so two hours a day. And she literally just sleeps all day. As you can see. She is so calm, so chilled. We have guests come round, we have family come round. She says a quick hello and then she goes back to bed. She is just so chilled. And like I said, she's a year. She's just turned a year. And she has always been like that. She's always been really calm. Um, and saying that, it isn't really particular of the breed to be that calm. Um, they are very crazy. Um, yeah, if you haven't got the time to walk a cockapoo, then they really are not the breed for you. They need a lot of exercise. And without that, they'd just be miserable. They are crossed with a cocker spaniel, which are a working breed. A lot of people forget that and think they look like a little teddy bear. Um, and oh, it's just like a little lap dog. They really aren't. Like, they are like that if they get enough exercise. Um, 
So yeah, you need to have the time to exercise your cockapoo for them to be like this. Otherwise, they will just be crazy. So many people say to me, oh, my cockapoo's chewed this up, they chewed that up. Um, yeah, and they're just absolutely crazy. Also, people tend to, you know, if you're at work all day um, and your dog's crated all day, um, then yeah, they're just gonna be crazy. They need lots of exercise. Thank you. Anyway, con number two is they don't like being left alone. They like to always be with you. They are what people call a Velcro dog. They love their humans. They don't want to be alone. Um, we did get Pepper used to being by herself for a short amount of times from early on because we have children, we're a family of five. Um, so, you know, there are places we need to go that she can't come. We do take her pretty much everywhere, but on the occasion she can't come, we started straight away as soon as we got her, um, getting her used to short times with us not there. And she's absolutely fine now. She doesn't like us going, but she doesn't get up to anything. Do you? She just has a walk before we go and sleeps. But they are known, you know, if you are a full-time worker, then they might not be the breed for you. They are known to, you know, cry and be very destructive if they're left for long periods of time. Again, that will be the working breed side of them. Um, and they don't like being left alone. So, yeah, that is another thing. It could be, it's a, either like a con or a pro, because for me, it's more of a pro. I love that she's a Velcro dog. I love that she wants to be with me all the time. Um, they are 100% lap dogs. She constantly, as you can see, wants to be, she's literally got a little head in my hand. <laughs> she wants to be with me all the time. Um, yeah, so they are lap dogs. So all of that is a con to me. Um, sorry, is a pro to me. Um, but to some people, you know, it might be a con. They might not want a dog that's a Velcro dog and that is going to want to be with them all the time. So that's another thing to think about when looking at getting a cockapoo. Um, one of the biggest cons that I have found, to be honest, I mean, there aren't really any cons for me. This breed is amazing. But if I was going to say a con, it would be the grooming. Um, the grooming side is hard, it's time consuming and it is expensive. So you really need to think about that um, when thinking of getting a cockapoo and your budget. Um, so Peppa goes to the groomers every three weeks. So she has to go at three weeks for a bath and a brush and then she goes three weeks later for a full groom where they cut her. Um, we have tried going longer than that and her fur is really curly. Um, if you can see, she actually went to the groomers two days ago, so she looks quite fluffy at the moment. Um, she just had a brush and blow dry. But yeah, she's quite curly. Different cockapoo furs are different sort of matting. She mats a lot. Um, so yeah, we try to leave it longer. If you don't get your cockapoo groomed, you will end up having to have them shaved really short because they get matted. And then that's really horrible for you and for the dog. Um, also, they need brushing like every day. I brush her every single day, a couple of times a day. Um, and when I say brush, it's not like a quick, just get a brush and go like this. It is my husband holding her and us on a table. Like you have to literally like pull the fur back and start off at the feet, go all the way up and do all over. So it is time consuming. Like I say, if you haven't got the time to do that, you will end up with a matted cockapoo, um, which isn't nice for them. Um, and yeah, they will end up being shaved bald. I have seen many cockapoos shaved completely bald because they end up getting so matted. So that is something you need to think about. Yes, it is. It is. <laughs> um, another con would be some of them. So this is in my pros and cons. So the con is that they can be very barky. Peppa is not, she very, very rarely barks ever. For about the first seven months, we never heard her bark at all. Um, some people say they're like a barkless breed um, and we were like, yeah, she doesn't bark at all. But then she did find her voice and she barks occasionally at something. Um, normally, you know, on a walk, at the leaves rustling or something. Um, she's not particularly barky at all. But I have heard, I'm on lots of cockapoo pages, um, 
and I did write a thing on there that I was doing this video and ask for people to give me their pros and cons as well um, and lots of people said barking so it's not something that I find as a con we don't have a barky dog but it is typical of cockapoos to be very barky so um yeah you may get one that barks a lot um the fifth con would be if you like to go to the toilet by yourself this isn't a breed for you once you have a cockapoo you will never pee alone again the cockapoos follow you everywhere absolutely everywhere you will never have a bath alone you will never go to the toilet alone if you like your peace and quiet don't get a cockapoo okay so now we are going to go on to the pros well, the biggest pro is that they are literally the best dog in the world. They are just the most loving, cuddly breed. They are for everyone. They are for children. They are for babies. They are for adults, elderly, whoever. They love absolutely everyone. Don't you? They are just the most friendly breed. Um, and yeah, if you're looking for a guard dog, someone to protect your home, someone to bark at strangers. It's not the breed for you. They love absolutely everyone. So that would be pro number one. Pro number two is that, this was what I was saying about the cons as well, is that they are a quiet breed. They are often known as the barkless breed, which in our case, it pretty much is that. She occasionally barks, but very, very rarely. Um, yeah, so we are lucky. We have one that doesn't bark very much. Um, our third pro would be that they are non-shedding. Now, when I say non-shedding, I should say low shedding because when you do your research on a cockapoo, you will see that there are three different coats. You can get curly, you can get wavy, and you can get straight. So the curlier your cockapoo, the more poodle side they have in them. Um, well in their fur so then they are less likely to shed um, they still may shed a little but it will be less likely the straighter they are the more likely they are to shed um, like I said when I'm on these groups and things people that have cockapoos that are just completely straight um, so they almost just look like a cocker spaniel they shed the same as a cocker spaniel so they shed loads um, so when you get a cockapoo have in mind that it isn't a non-shedding breed until you see really what that coat's going to be like you won't know um ours is non-shedding i've never seen any think anywhere from her oh i hear your little noises i keep waking you up you're just trying to sleep yeah so um again that is a pro that they are low shedding i wouldn't say non-shedding as in some people's case it is not that so i would say they are low shedding breed um pro number four is they are so 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 easy to train like so easy to train the poodle is one of the most intelligent breeds it um breeders breeds um and so is the cocker spaniel so put them two together you have got a mighty intelligent breed right here <laughs> i'm sorry they are super yeah, so they are super, super intelligent and just so easy to train. So all like, you know, the commands of, um, you know, sit or your usual commands, stay, things like that, lie down, are just so easy. They learn tricks just like that. Um, Pepper was off the lead from her first walk. Her recall's amazing. Super, super intelligent. So yeah, that is a massive pro. Um, and the fifth pro, I would say, which goes with the being intelligent, is they are so easy to toilet train. I've had several dogs, different breeds, um, and by far she was the easiest to toilet train. It probably took just under two weeks. Um, so when she came to us from the breeder, she was pad trained already. Um, so we actually never ever had an accident on the floor. She did have a couple of accidents when we first got her on the pads, but they weren't accidents as she had been trained by the breeder to go um, on the pad. So when we picked her up at eight weeks, um, she was going on the pad indoors um, and then within a couple of days we moved those pads to the back door um, and then the next day we moved the pads outside and then hey presto she got it straight away she has actually never ever had an accident indoors that wasn't on a pad so yeah super super easy to train so that is 
a massive pro. Um, my other two breeds are a pug and an Italian greyhound. Um, and I am going to do separate videos about them as well. But yeah, my pug, she's eight. And still goes to the toilet indoors. So to get a breed that learnt it so quick is just amazing. So yeah, that is our five pros and five cons. Um, if you have a cockapoo, drop me a message down below. Let me know um, your pros so and cons. That's my pros and cons of owning a cockapoo. Um, if you are looking at getting one and you're not sure about the breed, I hope that this video has helped you a little bit with your decision. I mean, seriously. She is just the most cuddly, loving thing in the whole world. She just absolutely loves cuddles and she loves to live in like under your neck. Look at her. So yeah, she ha actually hasn't even been walked yet today. I'm filming this in the morning and she hasn't even been out. So this is her after a whole night's sleep snuggle time. So, yeah. so thank you for watching and I hope this has helped you make your decision. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.